Who is responsible for the brutal murder and attempted murder of two young brothers in a small town in Iowa? Was it a complete stranger who attacked them at a gas station, or did their mother have something to do with it? Hello, and welcome to Killer Bites, a show where we discuss some of the most horrific true crime cases told by your favorite storytellers. I'm Brandy. Let's go. This is the story of Michelle Kehoe. Michelle grew up in Northeast Iowa, where she enjoyed participating in band, flag corps, and theater at Decorah High School. She went on to graduate high school and then began studying at the University of Iowa and actually double majored in biology and psychology. She studied physical therapy at St. Ambrose University, and then she worked as a pharmacy technician at the University of Iowa hospitals and clinics. She was smart and very busy with the whole world ahead of her. Michelle went on to marry the love of her life, Eugene Kehoe. Michelle affectionately calls him Jean for short. Together, the couple and their kids lived in Coralville, Iowa, where they're supposed to live their lives happily ever after. Then, on a cold December day in 2007, Michelle was driving in her car with her sons, Sean and Seth. They were headed to the library. Then, all of a sudden, Michelle hit a curb, and there was ice on the road. The car skidded across the ice. Michelle lost total control of the vehicle, and it went barreling into an icy river. Luckily, four men witnessed the whole thing go down and wasted no time at all. They immediately went in to help them. Inside the car, Michelle managed to dislodge her eldest son from his booster seat and pass him up to the men swimming around their car trying to help. Michelle even managed to dislodge her youngest son from his car seat and pass him to another man swimming around the car. The rescuers brought both boys to shore to safety. Michelle then fought her way out of the car. The current was so strong and it tried to drag her down into the water. She nearly drowned, but then another stranger on a bike was passing by and saw Michelle was struggling. The cyclist jumped in after her and brought her safely to shore. It was a dramatic scene to say the least. And luckily, there were so many people there who witnessed this and wasted no time at all trying to help save these people's lives. But this wouldn't be the only traumatic event in the Kehoe family's lives. Something even more horrific was yet to come. Almost a year later, it was October of 2008, October 26th to be exact. The whole family was at home as usual. Jean was scheduled to take a yoga class later on in the day. Michelle told Jean she was going to take the kids on a quick trip to visit with her mother in the nursing home over in Sumner, Iowa. Michelle wished Jean a good yoga session and gave him a kiss goodbye, and Jean left the house and Michelle did too. She and the kids hopped in their family car, a minivan, and they took off. Later that same day, October 26th, Jean returned home from yoga, but his family wasn't back yet. At first, he didn't think much of it. They were probably having a good time at grandma's and they'll just be back late. But the day turned to night and they still hadn't made their way home. Jean was still waiting up for them. So around 8.45 p.m., Jean took action and decided to call the local Coralville Police Department for help. Jean stated that his wife and kids had left their home around 11 a.m. headed for Sumner, but never returned home. Fast forward to the morning of October 28, 2008. Michelle Kehoe stumbles through Littleton, Iowa. She's wounded badly and has red vital fluid dripping down her body. She's alone, her kids nowhere in sight. Fortunately, Michelle was able to make her way to a nearby stranger's home to seek aid. She knocks on the door and asks for help. Luckily, they were home to answer the door. They were shocked at this unexpected visitor and called the police right away. The police receive the call for help and immediately make their way to the crime scene. Upon their arrival, they find a horrible scene. They find a very distraught and scared seven-year-old boy covered in dried red vital fluid. His younger brother lying lifeless on the ground near the family van just outside the driver's side door. Michelle told the police that they had stopped at a gas station in Littleton when a man attacked them and broke into their car. She said this man then took them to the hook and liner pond in Littleton. Michelle said that she tried to fight him off and used pepper spray on him, but she was unsuccessful and he ended up knocking her unconscious and then he must have brought them to this site. 
but that was a big fat lie. In fact, a lot of things that Michelle Kehoe said turned out to be lies. She didn't take her kids to visit with her mother in the nursing home over in Sumner. They were never attacked at this supposed gas station. Michelle drove them herself down to Hook and Liner Pond in the van. She parked the car, then whipped out some duct tape. She covered her eldest son, Sean's ears, eyes, and mouth with duct tape. After that, she took out a knife a camouflage handle Winchester hunting knife and used it to slit her son's throat. Then she dropped the child and went on to the next one, her youngest baby boy. Michelle pulled him from his car seat. She began duct taping over his eyes, ears, and mouth. And again, Michelle took out the same knife and began to slit the child's throat. And then Michelle leaves the crime scene. She leaves them there to die. The two-year-old Seth let out a few soft cries, but he pretty much passed immediately. However, the seven-year-old Sean managed to survive, thank goodness. After his mother stabbed him with a knife and then left him there, he ripped off all the duct tape from his mouth, nose, and eyes. With his sight back, he discovers his little brother lifeless. He then climbed into the family van for shelter and to rest from his injuries his mother gave him. He locked himself inside the van. Where did Michelle wander off to? She walked a little bit down the road to a nearby pond. It's at this pond Michelle attempted to take her own life using the same Winchester hunting knife. However, she was unsuccessful in her attempt. When she realized that she wasn't going to die and that she was unable to go through with taking her own life, she had to pivot and form a new plan she would play the victim, just like last time her car took a plunge into the river. That's when she walked to the stranger's house asking for help. And when the police showed up, she started talking to one of the officers right away. She started feeding him this bull story of a random man attacking them while they were at the gas station. But while Michelle was flapping her lips over there, one of the other officers rushed to aid the little boy. They asked him, do you know where you're hurt? He told them just his throat. They asked him, who did that to you? The little boy said, my mom. And then he added, she was hurting my baby brother. But get this, Michelle and the kids left on October 26th, but the officers didn't show up until October 28th. That's two days later. This kid had been hiding scared for his life alone for two days. It's just heartbreaking. The injuries that both Sean and Michelle sustained were very serious. Michelle was taken by air to a hospital for emergency surgery. Sean was taken to a different hospital in Waterloo, but was also rushed into surgery. Both of them were able to survive. At the hospital and after surgery, Michelle admitted to the crimes. It turns out Michelle had been plotting this for a while. She apparently bought the duct tape and the camouflage handle Winchester hunting knife a month before this horrible event occurred. She had chosen the date carefully so that her husband, Jean, was busy. Remember, Jean was at a yoga class. What Michelle hadn't planned for was her son surviving and ratting her out. Michelle was arrested and charged for first degree murder, attempted murder, and child endangerment. Her trial took place in November of 2009. At the trial, Michelle and her defense team admitted to the crimes, but they argued that Michelle's mental state at the time of these heinous attacks prevented her being held accountable. Basically, she pleaded insanity. But hey, at least she stopped lying about being attacked by a man at the gas station and was actually admitting to the crimes. At the scene of the crime, police found handwritten notes scattered around the van and ground. They were notes written from Michelle. They were an attempt to mislead the police further that a man attacked them. They brought these notes forward at the trial. They also had Michelle's son, Sean, at the trial to testify against his mother. Pretty much a slam dunk with an actual witness and victim. After two hours, the jury reached a verdict. They found Michelle Kehoe guilty of first degree murder and attempted murder. She received life in prison for first degree murder, 25 years for attempted murder, and 10 years for the endangerment of a child. 
The judge also ordered Michelle to pay $100,000 restitution for Seth's estate. Gene Kehoe was there in attendance at the trial. He was very visibly upset and uncomfortable during the whole thing. His voice was trembling when he addressed the court and asked for forgiveness for his wife. As he stepped off of the stand, he asked the first judicial district judge, Bruce Zager, if he could give his wife a hug. The judge said no. This case has been an absolute nightmare for Jean. He is quoted saying, I've lost my wife and best friend. But let's not forget, Jean, that you literally lost a son. Michelle is still alive. She's just not the person you thought she was, and she's going to prison for her actions. But the case is not closed there. After some time in prison, Michelle began to speak out. She wants another hearing. She's upset that at the 2009 trial, she did not use the chance to actually stand at the trial and address the courtroom. She said, I needed the jury to hear my experience. I needed the jury to hear it was out of my control on that day. I know that this horrific, tragic act happened through my hands, but it would never have been the intention of my heart. It would have never been the intention of a healthy mind. She went on to say that the reason she didn't stand trial at the last hearing back in 2009 was because she didn't feel stable at the time and she had just changed her medication. So she was feeling symptoms of anxiety and depression. She recounted several suicide attempts in her past. She went on to blame her childhood and her stepfather for her actions. She said that her stepfather used to abuse her. She said, this is the presence of my stepfather haunting me. This has happened with all of the suicide attempts. The one in 98 telling me I was worthless, I couldn't achieve anything, no one would believe in me. In 99, it would have appeared that I had been abducted and left to die in the bathtub. And the abductor in my head was my stepfather. So yeah, Michelle took this thing to the Iowa Court of Appeals. Michelle felt that her lawyer was ineffective and didn't do her case justice. This is really just a last ditch effort to gain her freedom, but ultimately it didn't work. The judges concluded that yes, Michelle does have mental health issues, but she understood and is responsible for the crime she committed. The judges also concluded that Michelle was not coerced into talking. She definitely voluntarily gave the confession to the investigators in the hospital right after the incident occurred. No coercion of any kind. So that brings us to the present day. Michelle is still locked up and serving her life sentence behind bars at the Women's State Prison in Mitchellville. Well, there you have it. Another heartbreaking true crime story of a mother destroying her family. It's so shocking to hear these stories because when you think of family or think of a mother, they're supposed to protect you, not hurt you. I'm so glad and thankful that Sean was able to make it out alive. I'm not sure where he is today, but I hope wherever he is, he is loving life and thriving. Our hearts go out to you and your father. Thank you for watching everyone. I'm Brandy. See you next time on Killer Bites.